Okay, so good afternoon. I'm Commander Barb Archer with the Major Crimes Division. I'm going to give you a brief update on the incident from 8 Fox Street that occurred Saturday morning about 2.40 a.m., which was October, or October, August 27th. So officers were called to 8 Fox Street with information from a female inside the house that there had been a disturbance inside involving a male, and that this male also had warrants for him. Um, on the way to the call, officers verified that this 49-year-old male was indeed wanted on several warrants. When they got to the house, they were met by the female who had called, and she said she would have the man come outside. Uh, the male came to the door. He saw the officers, turned around, and ran back inside. The officers recognized this male as a person they had researched on their way to the call and had, whose picture they had looked at. So when, as he ran in the house, the officers followed him to the second floor. The officers ran up some very steep and narrow stairs to the second floor of this house. The second floor is a converted attic space, so it has a very steep pitched ceilings and very cramped area. When the officers get upstairs, they hear a female screaming inside the room where the male had ran into. So they kicked open the door and they see that the male has armed himself with a, what we're calling a hunting knife with an approximately six inch blade. And he begins swinging at the officers and making slashing motions towards the officers. At the same time, he starts throwing different things at the officers, at attempting to get them to leave. Uh, the officers gave him repeated commands to drop the knife. He refused. He continued to make slashing motions with the knife towards the officers. They attempted to de-escalate their situation verbally and ultimately deployed less lethal options. The threat continued, and the male continued to advance towards the officers. Officers had created distance while backing up and continuing to attempt to de-escalate him to telling him to drop the knife to comply with their orders. Uh, the male continued to verbally challenge officers and advanced on them and was within six feet of where the officers were standing. Officers at this point had no choice but to fire at this very dangerous and aggressive individual. One officer fired several shots from his handgun and the male went down. The male was transported to a local hospital where he later died. There was a female in the room that we talked about that the officers heard screaming. She was taken outside um, and found to not be injured. There had been another male in the room, and he climbed out the second story window and crawled up to the peak of the roof, and he laid outside up there, uh, refusing to come down. Uh, we identified that male later as Antonio Ruiz uh, and had to call our Metro SWAT officers in to get him off the roof. While we were working on getting Mr. Ruiz off the roof, Officers on the perimeter were contacted by a, yet another male who walked up and had a stab wound. He told us that he had been inside that house um, and had been stabbed by the male who we had had our encounter with. Uh, he indeed had a stab wound to his body. He was transported to the hospital uh, where he was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. So in the meantime, the guy in the roof, Mr. Ruiz, officers with the assistance of fire department equipment were able to get onto the roof and take Mr. Ruiz into custody. He turned out to be wanted on several warrants and was taken to the hospital for evaluation and then later jailed for his warrants. As to the officers involved in the shooting, we will release their names later today. I can tell you that both officers are assigned to patrol in District 3. The officer who discharged his weapon has been with the police department for three years, with the other officer for two years. Uh, the officer who discharged his handgun has been placed on administrative leave uh, per our usual practice. So the coroner's office will release the identity of the deceased male later. During our investigation, though, multiple witnesses relayed that this male knew he had warrants for his arrest and that he was not going to go back to prison. Uh, we have determined that he had an extensive criminal history. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. Uh, we, do, we do our officer-involved shooting investigations cooperatively with the district attorney's office and members of the Aurora Police Department per established protocol. So at this point, if anyone else in the public has information that would be useful to our investigation, we encourage them to contact us. And that concludes my statement. Can you elaborate on the warrants that they had? The deceased party had multiple warrants for various felonies. I don't have the specifics. And Antonio? He also had several felony warrants. Felony. Yes. Were they recent crimes? Uh, the deceased party is were within the last month, I believe. And with the Denver Post, was the woman in the attic the same woman who answered the door when the cops got there? Or there no. Were, there were two women in the house. Yes. Okay. Do you know how many shots the, shoot, the officer fired? 
There were several shots fired. The details of that will be released when our investigation is concluded. It's very narrow, uh, very, like I said, very steep ceilings. Uh, the steep, narrow staircase leading up to the floor, the officers were within six feet of the suspect when he lunged at them with a knife and then they fired their weapon. So they were out of room to move. And how dangerous is it going into a space like that? Uh, when you can't get out, when you can't, you, you're, literally they're off, their backs are up against the wall because of the space confinement. The officers were clearly concerned for her safety because of the male being armed with a knife. Was he threatening just to hurt the officers or a, a woman as well? I'm not too clear on that.